Imagine that your job was to optimize the performance of wind turbines on a piece of land. It was on a hillside somewhere and the wind would be blowing typically from the east let's say and you had to site the wind turbines so that you would maximize the output of uh, production of energy from the turbines. How would you go about doing that? One way to do so would be to create a mathematical model where you would figure out where the interaction effects of the wind turbines would be when they're placed next to each other. But you can imagine that this mathematical model would be quite complex because of all the eddies and wind effects that would happen between the different turbines. A different approach would be to simulate the system. And by simulation, what we mean is to create a model of the system in a computer so that you could place uh, the different turbines and do an, a what-if analysis. So if you were to put the turbines here, assuming you can properly model the way in which the wind moves to some limited degree, then with some degree of confidence you can say what the output might be and you might be able to try out a number of different configurations before you chose one that you expect to work out well in practice. As you can see here, the role of the simulation, which is essentially to recreate in computation a mathematical model of the system is to optimize what the system can do and to try out a number of possibilities that would be impossible to do actually in practice. And that really is the way we use simulations in practice. Uh, when we have either a physical process which is complex or we have a computational system which we want to understand to some degree or the other, we could try simulations. Let me give you another example. Suppose you had a population of, let's say, rabbits and foxes in a forest, and you had a situation where if there's a large number of rabbits, then that would allow more foxes to be able to live because they could eat more rabbits. But then if there are more rabbits, then they would eat more foxes, and then there would be less for them to uh, survive on, and then the population of foxes would fall down, and then the rabbits would rise again. And so you would imagine a certain sort of cyclical behavior of the number of rabbits and number of foxes with a certain degree of phase shift. And you could actually uh, mathematically model this. Uh, people study this all the time mathematically using differential equations, a couple of differential equations. But you could imagine that you could study the same thing by using a fairly straightforward uh, computer model instead where you have a certain population of rabbits and you say the next year, this is the number of new rabbits you expect if the number of foxes was a certain number and if you had a certain number of prior rabbits. So um, the, the whole point is that we are able to use simulations to study the dynamic evolution of a complex system by modeling it as software. And that really is the focus of what we're going to study in this module about simulations. Simulations, roughly speaking, fall into two categories. Those of continuous processes, such as uh, the blowing of the wind or materials or electromagnetic waves, etc., and those that fall into discrete categories where there's a particular time slot or a time instant at which things happen. And in particular, for computer systems, we usually are working with discrete event systems. And so for the remainder of this presentation and this module, we'll be looking at discrete event simulations rather than continuous simulations. And more to the point, we'll be looking mostly at discrete simulation of computer systems rather than of physical systems. So in physical systems,